So I know you may believe that you're going to, through the toughest time possible. I know you believe that there is no way out, no way forward. You do not see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I want you to know that life is still possible. Whatever it is that you're going through, life is still possible. And um, I can give you a testimony. Uh, growing up, uh, within my younger days, maybe about 15, I um, went to my grandmother's place. And when I went to my grandmother's place, I, there, was a, there, was, there was a van that was parked at the front of the gate. So we normally climb on that van and sit throughout the night and enjoy it. We normally talk and everything and enjoy it over time there. And I remember this night, I had gotten a new shoes. So the bottom of the shoes, it was, it was a little bit slippery. And um, I remember climbing up on that van. And when I climbed on that van, my right leg slipped. And there was this iron piece that came up from the body of the vehicle. And it took out the entire portion of my uh, sheng area just above my ankle. And I remember going to the doctor that night and um, getting it stitched up. Coming home, feeling the pains and everything all throughout the night. I remember going to the, the clinics and getting it treated. And over a period of time, for some reason, it decide, decided that it didn't want to heal. No matter the treatment, no matter the repeated visits, it didn't want to heal. No matter what I did within that time, it didn't want to heal. No, it started to become a sore. That simply means the skin started to de deteriorate for the fact that it, the, the healing period, uh, that it was, um, you know, the period that it was possible to be healed and to have fresh skin and all that blood could, you know, uh, you know, draw everything back together that period had gone because for some reason it would not get better I remember going through school having that issue uh, it came down to a point where there was this dry scab that was always on the front of it and um, I would go to school and for some reason that dry scab would, would, would normally um, I would normally hit the foot on the desk and it would normally um, the dry scab would normally be removed and you know the blood would flow and everything and it, it, it seems as if I was stuck into a cycle where this wound just didn't want to heal and I went on with that issue for years as a matter of fact I went on with that issue for 11 years uh, after a time frame, it started to break out. And it, 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 it started from just a small little, little wound right on the leg and began to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Over time, I didn't notice that it's even getting bigger because I had spent, it had spent so much time there I had spent so much time with it, treating it myself for the fact that I took things in my hand because I was continuously going to the doctors, to the nurses, and no matter what they did, it, it, would, it, it wouldn't get better. So I took things in my own hands. And um, at that moment, pride had gotten to me as well. I didn't want anybody to see me go into the clinic um, on a weekly basis, two times per week. To get this thing done i didn't want them to spread this news within my community that i had a sore on my right leg or on one of my legs and i started to do it myself so doing it every day doing it every night doing it every chance that i got i became used to it it became a part of my life for 11 full years pain Pain is nothing to me. I went through pain. I can tell you that. I went through pain. I went through suffering. I went through many nights of tears. 
many nights of crying, wondering what's going on. When will this thing be better? Will I lose my leg? And um, <clears throat> it happened that when I was about to lose the leg, it got so bad. I begin to not care anymore because no matter what I did, it, it, it never, it, 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 it just seems as if it was just getting worse and worse. It started to smell even. I remember getting a job and I was at that job and there was this girl that I used to work with, very beautiful. And at the time she really, she, she liked me and um, really had my interest, you know, at heart. And um, I could, I, I know, knew for a fact that she wanted to, you know, have a relationship with me at the time. But I couldn't for the fact that I had this issue. I had to put her down. I had to put her aside. I had to cancel dates and everything of such. I remember one night we were working together and her pen fell from the desk and fell down to my right leg. And um, <clears throat> she went down there for the pen. And I was like, because I, I knew she would have picked up on some sort of odor that was coming from the wound. I had to do this thing every day in order for it not to um, smell while I was, um, you, know, you know, in a taxi or close to people. But I'm absolutely sure at times many people would have, would have had some idea. And um, I remember she came back up and she was like, what? What's, what's that? You know, and, and, I, and, and I quickly said to her, it's my shoes, right? And she said, no, man, you have to change that. You have to get rid of that, man, you know? But because she loved me so much, because she liked me so much, it, it came as nothing to her, even though that scent was so awful. Um, <clears throat> came back to when I... Um, I, 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 I went through a period, um, had left that job. Uh, I was at home and um, I was doing some farming. And I remember rain came and soaked me from, me from my head to my toe. But at that point, I didn't care because things was just seemed to be getting worse. I had been down and out. I had tried my best to get over this thing. It, nothing worked. So I remember heading home that night, that evening, and took off my clothes to get a shower. And I could have seen my right leg. That I, I, When I looked at my right leg, I saw that it was the end of this foot. I knew for a fact that there wasn't any coming back from this. I started to cry. I went down into... Um, a, 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 a sad fears started to cry. I, I, I asked God, I, I, I cried my heart out that night. And I said, Father, please help me. Please help me. He had already, we had already had a relationship because there's many things that happened within my life that I can talk about. So we ha already had a relationship. I normally call on my father for everything. And um, within that moment, he was waiting on the perfect moment to prove just how powerful he is. I remember following the unctions that he presented and given to me within that time. And um, he sent me to the same clinic that I didn't want to go. I said, how can I go to this place? I have avoided this place for so long because I don't want people to call my name. He said, there, I want you to go. You have to kill pride. And right there and then, pride, every pride that I had came crushing down because I decided I had to listen to the voice of the Father. And I got over pride totally from that day until today. And pride is a thing that the most I hate, if you didn't know. And um, I went to the clinic that I didn't want to go. 
And at the time, there was a doctor called Dr. Buckley. He was very young, but he loves his job. He worked at the free clinic in, at, at the area in which, in, you know, where I lived. And um, he looked at my leg and he was like, no, this, is, this, 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 this does not look good. For a young man, this does not look good. And um, I, I can't allow you to stay with this thing for any longer. Because I'm absolutely sure if you stay with this for any longer, it's going to be worse for you. And it ended up that he said to me, you're going to come back. And when you come back, if it doesn't look any better after the nurse has treated it, I'm going to send you somewhere. And I was there and I was contemplating the whole thing, still struggling with pride, still struggling with following the, 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 the voice of God, even though I was so contented within the moment to do exactly what the father had said but the enemy had his part so i went back and um i remember he said to me call me ask the nurse to call me the next time you come and i was contemplating should i call him should i call him i don't want to call him that's the enemy because the enemy knew that i had my breakthrough coming and it ended up that i got over the thoughts and i said nurse call Dr. Buckley for me. When he came in, he said, no, no way. I'm not keeping you here another week. You're going to uh, a certain, I'm going to give you a referral and I'm going to send you to a certain place. Took the referral. I went on that journey the following day. When I went there, it was a huge hospital. And when I got there, I went everywhere I possibly could to present the document they said that this is not you know they they aren't they don't understand it because there's no department here of such there is nothing that relates to this here and it's the big hospital so i was like what's going on what's going on that's that was a plan of the enemy as well he led me into the wrong place but then here is the power of the most high Within that moment, while I was leaving the hospital to go back home without getting sorted out, the father rested upon my heart. He said, turn back and go to that window and ask. And when I went and I presented the document there, the gentleman, I think he was a gentleman, he said to me, no, this is not where you're supposed to be. There is a, 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 a clinic down the road go down there and present this to them and see if they, that you know that place is the right place for you to be and i went on that journey still not knowing if that was the right place but i had you know that warmth and that 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 calm feeling within the spirit to say yes that's where i needed to go and um i headed down there and um when I headed down there, it was the right place. And I presented the document to them and they said, all right, go down to that corner and have a seat. When I went down there, there were several other people there with the same kind of issue. And um, it went until it was my time. I went in and they said that I should remove my pants. I did. <laughs> and... Um, they started to take off everything, like the bandages and everything that was there. And the doctor looked, and he was a Cuban doctor. And he looked, he looked, he looked, and he, he was like, oh, okay, okay. And within that place, there were Christian music playing. I can't forget. Everything is just coming back to me. And while I was there on the bed, I was like, um, I, 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 I don't even know why I'm here. And I said it out loud. That's the enemy again, working against my breakthrough. And the doctor looked over to me. And it's, it's a good thing he was a man of the Mosai. Because if he wasn't, he probably would have said, go. And he looked at me and said, do not worry. I'll take care of you, okay? You're in the right place. And at that point in time, I felt calm. 
I felt like, yes, I, I was within the right place. He bandaged me up from, from my toes all the way up to my, my, um, my thigh area. And um, it was, what he did was like nothing I've ever experienced since they were bandaging, you know, and stuff like that. Since the, the earlier stages coming on for 11 years. There was one nurse that did it like that. And I got my breakthrough at that point in time. But there is so much that I could say. But um, I'll save that for another time. And um, it ended up that I went home limping because I couldn't walk. He had rubbed the wound, scrubbed the wound, washed it, dealt with it so, you know, clean it up and, 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 and sort it out properly. And um, it ended up that... I could have hardly walked, but I, but I took my time and went, walked home. And I remember when I got home, I, feel, I felt this joy within me. Like, yes, there is something good that is going to be coming from this. And it happened that I, I ended up going back when they told me to come back. And each time that I went, I saw improvement i kept on praising the most i praising the most i feeling joyful feeling happy and within i remember one moment he said to me and this is favor beyond measure and this is only by the most high he looked at me and he said i'm gonna perform a skin graph on you nobody got that favor the doctor was supposed to leave that place he was supposed to leave that place because he had just came there to, 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 to do a little bit of training with the nurses that was there. And it ended up that he did the skin graft for me within that time frame. That is the favor of the Mosai. Nobody else had gotten that favor but me. That is the power of my father. And that's what you get when you trust in him. And I remember he performed the skin graph and I was crying. I couldn't help it. I had to burst out crying while I was on that table, on that um on the on the on the bench or, or the um bed. They took the skin from my hip and placed it on there. And he said, Look, what do you think? And when I looked up and saw what he had done. It was marvelous. He said, well, that's your skin. You're healed. <laughs> and I felt so joyful within the moment. He told me when to come back. I went back. And um, I started to go back for the finalization, the final touches, the final um, you know, cleaning of the wound and stuff like that. And I remember... The final night when I went, he took off the bandages completely and said, you can go. I was bandage free. I didn't have to worry anymore. I didn't have to worry anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't have to worry anymore. Thanks be to the Most High. I didn't have to worry anymore about bandages. I didn't have to worry anymore about the scent. I didn't have to worry anymore about losing my right leg. No, it's possible for me to travel if needs be. It's possible for me to stay out in the rain because there's nothing that can affect me because of the power of the Most High. There is so much that the Father can do for you and me. His powers is unmatched. There isn't anything within this life that he can't do. Any issue that you're going through, he can see you through. Just like this hill behind me. This was dense and void, filled with trees, mosquitoes and all sorts of different things. And this hill is being excavated now. 
for a bigger project, for a project that will be so beautiful at the end. Where I'm not saying that the trees weren't beautiful, but the change that is happening. So is it possible to happen within your life as well? Anything that you're going through. If you're struggling with pornography, if you're struggling with alcoholism, if you're struggling with drug addiction, if you're struggling with sexual immorality, all these things can be placed under your feet right at this moment if you give it all to the Father. You have to walk in accordance to how he desires you to walk. And once you do so, he will see you through. I can guarantee you. I can now walk without having any issues. I can go to the beach. I can enjoy myself. I'm able to travel. I'm able to, to, to enjoy life in a different way now because of my father and his leading. Within that moment, you know, that I, that I had gotten my breakthrough, you know, it was a little bit tough for me at, at that time. And I remember getting a job within that moment, just when I was about to get my breakthrough. And when I got that job, it was a little bit of, I had to take a taxi from where I lived. And when I went on that journey, you know, it, it started to bring in income for me. But while it was bringing in income for me, I would have to give up where God sent me, where the Most High sent me. He had sent me to the clinic where I was living. I had to give that up and go to a clinic um, where I was working. And that's not where my breakthrough was. I had to leave the job. I had to give it up. Because this is not where my father desires for me, for me to be at that time. And I, had, I, I was running on zero. There wasn't any income I had. But I had to trust in the Most High within that moment. And that's what I did. And thanks be to the Most High. He saved me. He saved me from walking with only one leg. He saved me from being wheelchair bound. If it wasn't for him, I do not know where I would be today. He has so much waiting for you. As I speak today, if you take my word and you run with it, seek he first the kingdom of the Most High. Walk in accordance to all his desires for your life. Think on his promises for your life. Think on the things of the Most High. Depart from the things of this world. Separ be separated from the things of this world. And exalt yourself above it. Cause it not to have any sort of expression within your life. And your Father within the heavens will see that you're trying. And when you prove true, He will see you through. I hope this has been a blessing to you. It's getting dark here. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And um, I pray that any issues that you're going through, you will eventually overcome them. I pray that this testimony will shed a little bit of light on the power of the Most High. I pray that you shall be strengthened in this hour. And to know that no matter what you're going through, your father within the heavens i don't want you to call on any other name call on the name of your father your creator your beginning and your end allow him to see 
that you're willing to be separated from the things of this world in order to pursue him and he will see you through. Shalom. <laughs>